Okay, today what we're going to do, we're going to solve a problem on image J. So image J is an um, image analysis software used by people that does uh, that do microscope stuff. So um, yeah, you can download it from, for free on uh, imagej.neh.gov, uh, whatever, download.html. Um, I will not advise you to uh, download at this link download instead Fiji which is uh, image day with scripting power so that's what we're going to use today so download the thing and uh, we're gonna go to step two uh, which is making a script on image day to analyze image in batch programmatically so with image day you can open a file and um, look at it so this is the file I'm gonna work it work with it today um, so here there's two channel on the thing, so red and green. Enter, it's a Z stack, so um, there's there's depth in the thing. I don't know what, I actually don't know what this, uh, what tissue is this. And um, I don't know what this is. I think it's a time. This is the Z stack and this is the channels. So our problem is this one. We want to uh, write the image J script that will generate three different max intensities Z stack from um, each LS LSM file. So a file like I showed you, and then I, they want to uh, we want to merge we want to merge the red and green files and then save the whole thing as a R RGB. And also what we want to do in this uh, problem is to batch the whole thing so we can run the same as this multiple time on different files so that's what we're going to do we're going to first chunk the problem the first step will be to uh, make something that run on multiple files and afterward it will be to progressively do what this thing says so at first we're gonna um, take the file generate a max intensity z stack and then generate the max intensity z stack on three different uh, stack range and then we're gonna generate this, this, uh, those three stack range, and then we're gonna merge the red and green um, file, and then finally we're gonna uh, save the whole thing as a RGB at the end completely, and then we're gonna do the whole thing for every file. So that's the plan. Step one. So first thing what we want to do is to create a new script. So we go to new over there script open that thing and now here we can create a new script we're gonna switch the language to uh, IG1 macro uh, we can actually write this thing in the script in many language um, I will honestly advise to uh, do the whole thing in Java because image J is written in Java so it's more powerful in this language but uh, for now we're just gonna use the macro um, it's gonna be simpler so if we want to batch process something in image J, there's a template for that. So we're going to click on template, go to image J batch, and then process um, folder. Okay, not process open image, process folder. Oh wow, everything is here. Okay, so now if we run that, it will open um, a prompt for us here. This thing will open a prompt. It will let us input a directory, an output directory, and the file suffix that we will search for and then what's happening is we're gonna call this function process folder this is the function um, we don't need to understand what's happening but basically it takes each it goes recursively into the directory and it take each file and will process it right so the only thing that you need to change if you want to do batch processing is this thing over here process file so you uh, change this, nothing else, and you will be able to process a uh, file iteratively. So let's run this just to see what it does. Here, we have this little prompt. It says input directory, output directory, and which file we want to do stuff with, okay? So this is my desk desktop, and I'll put it in my desktop, and I want to, um, and I want to target .lsm file. 
if I click OK, see it will output this because if we look into the process file, it's printing this string. So input plus file separator plus file. This is the path of the current file that we're looking at. So this, which is the file I opened up right, away, right here. And um, the output directory, which is the one that I uh, inputted. Save this. This is the beginning. I'm just going to change some names. Just for aesthetic purposes, I don't like camel case. So, first thing we want to do is to get the uh, path name of the file right. So the path is only input plus file separator. So the slashes, depending on if you're Mac or Linux or Windows or whatever. So we create the path to the file. And then we're going to create the full path, which is the path plus the file. So if we have the full path, we can now open the image. So let's open the image. Um, go. There we go. We opened that image programmatically. Now this is at the beginning, right? At the end completely, what, the, what we want to do? We want to close the thing. Let's run this. But we should see something pop and then close. See? Saw it? It was there. Pop and close. So this, the image is now closed and this will happen for every file in this folder okay good so now we're gonna set up some variables in between those open and close statement so at, at for when you open it will be there when you close it will be gone so it's gonna be a new uh, file afterward so we're gonna set up the variables so when you see uh, two slash like this, it means it's a comment, so it's not real code. I can write whatever I want, doesn't matter. So just to keep me structured. So the title is, uh, get title, yeah, I got the title. My new title will be composite RGB plus the original title, just so I can dif differentiate them. So this is starting to look great. Um, so in the problem they say, I want to write an image a script that will generate three different max intensity Z stack from each file. Okay. So how do we make a max intensity Z stack? We're gonna use the run Z project. So just those are just function macro that you need to know. You can Google them or go into documentation. Okay, so let's run this and now close it. See what happened. Good. So there we go. We made our Z, our uh, Z stack. We just basically concatenate them all together. We still have our two channels. Um, we still have our two channels. Uh, it doesn't matter. We're gonna split them afterward. But this is how you stack stuff together. Now, maybe you don't want to stack all of them, right? Maybe you just want, uh, right, right now we stack from here until here. Maybe we want to stack from here to here, and then from here to here, and then from here to here. This is the problem we're asked to solve. So how we do that? What are the bracket that you want? We want zero to five, six to 10, and 11 to 15. So we need a start and a stop. If we look at the documentation, they tell you, that you need a start, start equals something, to 10, and then a stop equal something, let's say 20, just to start. So let's run that. There, our Z stack is a bit different than before. 
remember what it looked like. It's a bit different. So now let's say let's say zero two two. Hey, this is different. It's just stacking some of them, not all of them. See the difference? So now uh, we know that. What we need to do is we need to run the same thing for multiple um, multiple stack brackets. Okay, so we're gonna create a variable. So the variable we're gonna create will be start uh, stack, and it's gonna be a new array. And then the stop stack call also a new array. Right, so the array will, the start stack will consist of the start of uh, the three stack that we want. So 0, 6, and 11. Yes. And then this will be 5, 5, 5, 10, and 15. So that will be the start stack, this will be the stop stack array. Let's write array. So that we know it's an array. Good. So somehow we're gonna need to uh, access those. So what this run function accept two parameters, there are two strings, right? So what we're going to do, we're gonna create the string based on the start stack array. We're gonna do String concatenation. Right, we're gonna remove those. Put the space there. Put some pluses. So now, instead of writing uh, three, uh, one big string, we're gonna write um, one, two, three. Or five string we're gonna stitch them all together and then we're gonna give it to the function run so we're gonna to test try to make a, a z stack from 0 to 5 with the uh, variables so we accessed access this at the start stack array the first variable at 0 so this is the first variable right this is the well, actually this is the zeroth variable this is the first this is the second because we start indexing at zero and then we do the same thing over here stop stack array this will uh, create a string for us because um, this is what I, I said to um, uh, it's it will be better to do it in Java than to just learn image dim macro because this is a Java program that is running in the background it's way easier to understand if you have Java background. Great. Let's let's well, we're gonna run this, but we're also gonna print what this means. So let's print this whole thing. Right? Because I told you it was a string. Let's see what it is. Okay, so we have our stack from zero to five. So if we move this little guy from zero to five, this is the, the area that we want to cover over here. And this is what it did, right? If we look at the log, it says start equal zero, stop equal five, project send equal max intensity. This is the command we gave to run, right? And if you look here, the start at zero is equal to zero, start at the stop at zero is equal at five. So this is what's happening. So what we need to do is we run, need to run this three time Right? We need to run this three time so that we can um, create the three, three um, different stack uh, in one in one shot. So how we do that with the for loop? This is how you do it. So this is create three different stack um, stack. Create two different Z stack. So you use a for loop. This is what it look like. We're gonna select the window. Okay, we select it here. We're gonna select it here so that every time we're gonna select the original window and not another one. So we select uh, the LSM file and then we run the Z project on it. We're gonna rename all of them so that they're gonna have different names. 
we're gonna put a tag on it just so that uh, we know exactly what the what bracket we're in okay so this is the file name of the stack it will be lsm for the uh, lsm file plus it will be tile plus the tag that we gave it here then we're just going to rename our file to be tag file name right let's run that 11 to 15 makes sense uh, this one is the original this is 6 to 10 and this is 0 to 5 it makes, makes super sense what's left to do here is we need to split the channels because you see there was a red and a green I'm gonna split them, merge them into one file. So let's split the channel. I had many files open. This is channel two for this file, channel one for this one, whatever. Um, we split them. Now we need to merge them together. Right? We're just gonna take notes of the name here. It's C1 and then the name. So the function is merge color. Uh, merge channel sorry and you take a c1 and a c2 and a c3 and c whatever if you have more than that but we're gonna do it we're gonna use this we're gonna do, use concatenation of string again we're gonna do c1 slash whatever the file file name that we put here and then c2 equals c2 slash and this thing so you will know exactly which channel to merge we create that z stack and then we, we merge it to channel and we get the color um, we get the, this file at the end, those files, and you see they are all named RGB. What we're going to do after this whole thing is we're going to make a new title, RGB title. We're going to use the new title that we created over here, composite RGB plus our title, original one. And then we're going to put our tag, and then we're going to rename this file that we're currently working on, right? RGB title then then we're gonna save that thing and then you can decide which kind of uh, image format you want to save let's say TIFF for now and you can change this part afterward click OK and then they will all be saved right if we look into my desktop there they are right that's our files it's exactly what we looked for um, now if we have thousands of files, they will keep popping up in the, in the screen, that's not what we want. If, they, if, they, if too much of them pop, we might crash the PC. So what we want to do is close that file as soon as we're done doing the thing. So close. So let's close the active file each time we go through the for loop. So if we run that, they should disappear as soon as they're done. And we're only left with our original file. Um, which would, should also close at the end. We don't care about it really. So if we run this, we should see nothing but the output at the end. So they come and go, right? And then oh, here they are. That's all my composite files. So yeah, this is how this thing works. Um, if you have a question, just let me know. And um, yeah, that's it. That's it for today. Hope you enjoy it and see you in the next video. Thank you.